Hey everybody, this is Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. And today I want to review the 12 inch MacBook. This is the 2016 version that came out not very long ago, about a month or so ago. I want to review this from my individual perspective, my individual use perspective, just to show who this computer is going to be useful for. I realize that this is a very polarizing device and this is not a device that's going to be good for everybody. So I'd like to say why it works for me, why I've been able to switch from my MacBook Pro over to this one as my daily computer. And I've been using this faithfully. I had my MacBook Pro, my 13 inch one, and was using that every day, picked this guy up and have not put it down since. My MacBook Pro is sitting somewhere in my apartment along a wall. I literally have not touched it. And also, I'm pretty confident to talk about this now because I've been using this for over a month. So I want to split up this review into two different categories, what this computer is for me and also what it is not for me. But before we do that, I want to talk about the particular specs of this model. This is the Core M5 unit. This is the mid-tier one, the 1.2 gigahertz. Essentially, we have a faster internal SSD, 512 gigabytes. We've got a bit faster RAM. We've also got faster processor. So you're seeing a little bit of boost on the CPU side and definite boost on the GPU side. We've also got a bit better battery life, all while being exactly the same size and the exact same casing, except for this one is pink. So I had this computer last year and I actually really liked it because of the size, but I just didn't feel comfortable enough to use it as a daily computer. Whether I felt that there were little hiccups here and there, or just slightly not powerful enough, I am confident enough, oddly, to use this every day as my main computer, and we will get into those use case scenarios. So let's start off with what it is for me, or the good points for me. The first thing you're going to notice is the size. Now next to me, this doesn't look spectacularly small. That's the case in point here, is I'm a very small person, so it's hard for me to carry around a large size laptop, even a 13 inch and a 15 inch laptop, those can be quite heavy, and once I put them in a backpack, I start getting those kind of tear lines, the capillary, broken capillary lines on my shoulders. So this is a joy for me to carry around at just 2.03 pounds. That is what really attracted me to this. I need ultra portability just because I'm a small person. I could see other people liking ultra portability because you can easily shove it in a bag, just a small backpack that I have here it could be used as a very small carry-on, and you don't know that it's there. It's very, very light. At two pounds, I forget that it's even there. And I also find that because this is so small and ultra portable, I'm using this a lot more than a smartphone. And so I feel that I've been a lot more productive lately with an ultra portable computer. I'm also one who likes to laze around the house editing my videos. And I don't like having a big bulky laptop sitting on me. So this works really nicely. It sits on my knee. I don't notice the weight at all. It's like having a tablet, which I really love the form factor of a tablet that has a full operating system on it. And I've been looking for that type of a solution for a really long time. Another reason that I admire extreme portability is that I cannot stand CPU fan noise. I don't care how little noise it is. It's just very fatiguing to my ears. It bothers me so, so much. So it's wonderful to have just a little tiny computer that's essentially a mobile processor in this thing. And it does not need a CPU fan. It's just not powerful enough for that. So this thing is silent. It doesn't ever make any noise when I'm watching movies. I don't get that fatiguing noise. When I'm recording voiceovers, I record into this computer and I don't have to worry about the fan kicking in and hearing that as background noise. So that is absolutely wonderful. The next thing it is for me is that it's pretty and it's a good experience. First, approaching pretty a little bit. I use a computer all day, every day. So if it's a really pretty, nice built computer, I am happy to use it. It's a good experience in that way. And this MacBook is incredibly well built, if not the most well built computer that's on the market right now. The hinge is very, very sturdy. There is no weird flex to this computer or the display. There's no creaking. It's just a really nice, solid unibody design. I also think that it looks really badass with this D brand skin. This is a leather black skin that I have on the front and on the back. It keeps it well protected, not to worry about it getting scratched up. I want to thank Dbrand so much for making this video possible by making it possible to purchase this computer. So thank you, Dbrand. I really love their stuff. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check out where I got this and the different options. 
The other aspect of having a good experience is that the ecosystem is good. So with Mac and Apple products, I usually know what I'm getting with my Apple tax. I have no unexpected driver issues. That's really important to me. OS X is a consistent ecosystem in my experience. I just need something that works. It needs to be up and running without tinkering. And this does. Since day one, this computer has had no problems at all. Although I am not against trying some of the Windows options that are out there, such as the Razer Blade Stealth and the Razer Core. That is so cool. I want to try it so bad. I'm really into the possibilities of using an eGPU. So I'm not down and out with Windows. I just think that the marrying of the hardware and the operating system with this little Mac is perfect. Also, this keyboard hasn't been bad for me at all. These butterfly keys. Yes, the travel is very, very shallow. The feedback is very, very shallow, but I have little stubby fingers and that's been working for me just fine. I've actually come to really like this keyboard. So definitely go into an Apple store, play with it and see what you think about this keyboard because you will either love it or hate it or maybe you'll just learn to tolerate it. Also, the way that the trackpad marries with the operating system is phenomenal. The experience is really, really great. I find the trackpad to be very accurate. The force touch has worked phenomenally for me. It's just an overall really great experience. Another incredibly important thing for me is media capabilities. And this is something you don't get with all hardware that's out there. Apple really cares about the quality of their displays, and this has a killer display on this. An absolutely gorgeous display. Colors on this thing look pretty nice out of the box, although I would probably load my own calibration profile to it for editing purposes. Also, the speakers on this little laptop are extremely impressive. They get really nice and loud. They sound pretty full to me for what they are. So if I want to kick back and watch some Netflix when I'm not working, the display is perfect and the sound is absolutely great. It's really hard to find a nice laptop that has great speakers in combination with a nice display, especially at this size. Media capabilities are also insanely important because I video edit all the time. I need to have a good display. And if I don't want to plug in a nice pair of headphones, I need to have good speakers so that I can hear my voice represented well. Now moving on to performance capabilities, let me say this. Obviously this is nowhere near the most powerful computer on the market, but I don't currently need the most powerful computer. What I need and am most comfortable with is extreme portability in most circumstances. What's important over the spec race is that it is powerful enough for my individual workflow editing with Final Cut X, and it definitely is, much to my surprise. We will get into my experience in a moment, but note, it's not nearly as good of an experience with something like Premiere Pro. So benchmark-wise, of course, it is not as strong as my MacBook Pro, or obviously devices that have discrete graphics, but my workflow is fairly simple, so this works, thanks to Apple's editing software primarily. I can edit 1080p 60 frames per second video with no problems in Final Cut X, just a few drop frames here and there when dealing with complex edits. And I have been making all of my videos lately on this computer and exporting them without issue at all. Export takes a few minutes longer than my 13 inch MacBook Pro, but it's not something that deters me. I notice when running it against my MacBook Pro that the export keeps up for a bit neck and neck, then it throttles down due to not having a CPU fan and avoidance of overheating, but it isn't horrific. You can edit 4K video on this, and it's pretty okay in Final Cut X. It can be not as smooth in playback as 1080p, but just use a proxy and it will edit at a quarter resolution, then it works like a charm. Editing in Premiere is not going to be as smooth sailing as I mentioned. It seemed to do okay with very simple 1080p edits, but as soon as I started adding effects, playback suffered in the timeline. Export times of the video were not worth it when it took so much less time from Final Cut X. A 4K sample I tried was just a no-no. Even if you can use proxies in Premiere as well, this computer is just not powerful enough for Premiere. Rendering or export times are just a nightmare. So I would say that I would exclusively edit on this computer in Final Cut X, unless you have something else that works great for you and you've tested it, but this is what I've tested individually. The background rendering is what I think really helps the editing process in Final Cut X on this computer. In this case, performance needs are bursty in nature, and this computer handles bursty loads just fine. 
So brushing over the gaming experience, this is not a gaming laptop, obviously. I'm not a PC gamer, but I've been told that some people are playing simple titles and it does okay. Some people are trying out more complex titles and they're putting it to the lowest resolution and settings and it's somewhat playable. This computer is not going to be able to withstand constant heavy loads. It's going to be a computer that's pretty good at doing bursty things. So don't expect this to be a good sustained performer. The last thing that this offers for me that I'm pretty happy about is the decent battery life. It's pretty good battery life. Apple is saying that it's lasting an hour longer than last year's model. And I think that's holding up to be pretty true. Throughout the day, this lasts me more or less just fine until I'm doing things like editing video and exporting. But overall, I've been pretty happy with the web browsing battery life and I don't have much to complain about. It also seems to charge really nice and quickly. So bridging from talking about charging, which takes this one little port that's on this computer, let's talk about what this computer is not for me. So even though this computer has only one port on it, this one USB-C port, it is not even an updated port. It's the same one as last year. It's been annoying, but it's not something that's deterring me from purchasing it at this point. Luckily, I have a very simple workflow where I don't really need to plug in many things at once. And the battery life is good enough to where I'm able to import all my footage and then just simply plug it in afterwards. But still, that is insanely aggravating for the price that this computer is. This little port should come with an adapter. It really should. Apple should not be charging extra for this. So in principle, that's something that's going to be making a lot of people really angry, just like last year. And you may avoid buying this computer just for that reason. Another thing that irritates me about this computer is the price. We just like calling this Apple tax at this point because this is insane. For the amount of power that you get, I paid about 1600 bucks. And luckily I went down to Portland, Oregon where there was no tax, so I didn't have to pay tax. So I got this thing for 1600 instead of having to pay even more than that. What you are purchasing from Apple is an experience. And if you're aware of that, you might be okay with putting out that chunk of change. I think what bothered me most when Apple made the announcement is that they did not update the port to being Thunderbolt 3. Why didn't they do this? All these other small laptops that are coming out are supporting Thunderbolt 3. You can plug in an external GPU, for example. That would have been the perfect solution for me, being able to have my little Mac and then plug in an eGPU when I needed to do some more heavy, intense rendering processes. But no, this is stuck at being crippled, in my opinion. The bandwidth is not going to be good enough for an eGPU. So I'm hoping to see next year that it supports Thunderbolt 3, but I'm not expecting that. So I might see how I feel about going over to the Razer Blade Stealth with that cool Razer Core. Also, this computer is not a webcam for me. It's still stuck at 480p. Although oddly, that doesn't really annoy me because I have always used an external camera. I have a pretty good external web camera that has autofocus and everything, so I'm not upset with that. But in principle, that's something that's going to annoy a lot of people. There's a lot of principle here that is going to deter people. Overall, I think that this is a brilliant little computer for what it is. It has a great experience. It's going to be for the person who has a very simple workflow or for somebody who needs extreme portability but likes great media capabilities. But for the geeks out there, know that this isn't going to replace a desktop computer. It doesn't do that for me. It's just extremely portable and I'm very happy with the experience that it gives and it happens to be powerful enough for my individual workflow. I just like OS X, it really works for me. So this is kind of the corner that I've been pushed into for now. Although I really do want to try out that Razer Blade Stealth. If I get my hands on one, I will make a review about it and let you know what I think. So this has been Erica, the technology nerd likes to film stuff. Please rate, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think about this little MacBook. It's very polarizing. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. And I happen to love it because it works for my workflow and just happens to fit a lot of things that I need in particular. So let me know what you think and goodbye.